Welcome to another episode of Behind the Scenes, a deeper perspective in the industry. My name is Fabio Jacobs and today on Behind the Scenes we are in the kitchen with an aspiring um, culinary expert all the way from Kronstadt and currently residing in Kronstadt. Um, for many of us, COVID-19 um, came with a toll and, and had a lot of disadvantages but for some of us it came with a lot of new ideas and great, 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 great ambitions. We'll hear exactly about that and on that COVID-19 tip, do not forget to keep on sanitizing your hands. Keep on wearing your face mask when necessary and adhering to the lockdown restrictions and today um, on the black couch we are seated with uh, i think it's right to say chef how are you i'm good thanks how are you? i'm doing well thank you welcome to behind the scenes thank you thank it's an absolute um, honor to have you on the show um so i want us to to, to firstly start i'm um, all the way back from Kronstadt, where you were born all right um how was your childhood like uh i i was born and raised in Kronstadt. Mm. Yeah, and I went to St. Peter mm. Primary School. Then from there, I went to I went to Zenith High, mm. and that's where I got expelled. And I moved to Kananelo Senior Secondary. Why did you get expelled? Hey, we <laughs> wanna know why did you get expelled? I was a bit of a problem in grade mm. eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so in the middle of the year. Mm. The teachers had had it enough. The school had in grade had, eight. In grade eight, that's the first year that in high school. That's my first year already. in high school, and I was already, <laughs> you know. Mm. So in the it was around August mm. or July, mm. and then they took a decision that they're gonna expel me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 And then my parents went to talk to them so they can take me back so I can complete the year at least. Mm. So yeah. That's when they took me back and they, they said the following year they don't want to see me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's when I went to Kananela. Mm. Yeah. I want to know, throughout your all, whole childhood until, um, let's say, high school, did you ever have ambitions? And all of those ambitions, were they any way I'm um, involved with culinary? No, not really. The ambition of cooking mm. began when I was in grade 10 mm. because all I, all I wanted to do was I wanted to become a boiler maker mm. so when I, when I got to grade 10 you know um, just to interject I never knew what a boiler maker is I always see I don't it's something in engineering I thought like there are people that make I don't know like what's a boiler maker uh, you know because like I'm saying mm. I lost interest mm. because I didn't follow up mm. on what a boiler maker does. Mm. Mm. So I followed what I loved. Mm. Yeah. So I never really got to research on what do mm. boiler makers do. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 So um, the passion for cooking started in grade ten. In grade ten. Um, what do you think influenced um, that passion for cooking? Uh, most of the time, I was alone at home. Mm. My parents would be at work, my brother would be, will come late from school, mm. and then I would start cooking for myself. Mm. And then I started watching uh, Food Network. Mm, That's where that. mm. it all began, mm. right, right, Lore. Mm. I want to pursue this now. Mm. This is what I want to do now. You know? mm. Yeah, so mm. that's where it started from grade 10, cooking for myself watching what was happening on food network yeah mm. also basically you're one of those um kids that watching for barefoot contests uh yeah watching yeah. you're like okay chopped. yeah what chopped yeah, yeah. i want to see he myself said, there i'm ramsey i'm there yeah <laughs> and then i'm um, from there on um now how did you make sure that this passion now um increases um did you now say okay i'm only taking cooking um seriously and then straight to varsity or you had also other alternatives no, I didn't have other alternatives, to be honest. Mm. After, after I received my, okay, in the matric year, mm. I started researching about the culinary academies mm. in South Africa. Mm. So I found these other ones and they were expensive. Mm. So luckily, there was a tourism exhibition that was happening in, right here in Bloemfontein. Mm. So I met a lady who was studying the school, the culinary school. So I talked to her and I compared the prices. Mm. So yeah, and then after I compared the prices, I said, okay, this is what my parents can afford. Mm. So let me just 
come here. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So in January, I've, I had forgotten about the lady. Mm -hmm. You know, so I wanted to go to that other one, other one that was yeah. expensive. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered Hans a retrieval in Tatuaga around Bloemfontein. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered, hey, I have this lady's number. Let's mm -hmm. call her Global Division. Prospectors who are not going to play mm. major, mm. and then mm. I was accepted. But now, um, there's something that is very much confusing that, that I want us to iron out, right? I know that in 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 specifically in black um societies, the idea of cooking is something that people will never see. This is what I I I, I want to make my bread and butter out of. That's what I want to make money out of because cooking is is a home essential, yeah. and in a setup where we grew up in, cooking is a lady's duty. So I want to know how did your parents take um, this decision that you made that you know what I think I want to do cooking for the rest of my life uh, My parents did not have a problem with it mm. because they saw it from where I started it, mm. that mm. I always cook for them mm. uh, I love cooking mm. When they came from work everything was already cooked mm. Yeah, like almost every day whether mm. they didn't have much mm. of school work to do mm. Yeah. Mm. So they didn't have a problem with that mm. So fast forward now to Bloemfontein. When you get to Bloemfontein now, um, you end up finding up um, that lady, Nate. Yes. Yeah. So now, how was the, your, your whole journey throughout that culinary school? Uh, it was it was a wonderful journey. Mm. I don't want to lie. Mm. So because uh, it was a wonderful journey. Mm. Uh, we I experienced a lot a lot of things. Mm. Uh, a lot of I was into Italian cuisine mm. when I go to the culinary school. Mm. So mm. when I got there, there was a African cuisine chef that was invited to school, mm. Chef Nompumelelo. Mm. And then Chef Nompumelelo uh, brought light to us about mm. African cuisine. Mm. That's when I, I was like, okay, maybe Italian cuisine it was not a bad idea, mm. you know, mm. because who would want to come from neighboring countries or mm. outside South Africa and come into South Africa to have an Italian, to have an cuisine. Italian cuisine that was prepared South by Africa. a South African? Oh, it, it doesn't makes make so sense, much sense. You know? yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And then Chef Mpumi influenced us that African cuisine in mm. Africa is the way, mm. you know, mm. so yeah. And then I I I I loved uh, what is it? I loved the hot section of the kitchen. Mm. That's when uh, I did I developed it during the journey mm. of my academic years. Mm. Yeah, that's where I developed uh, my hot section. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I think a lot of people have this question in their mind you know, that you know a uh, we know. More or less, we all know how to cook, mm -hmm. right? And we cook good food as Africans, yes. right? The big question is, why do you have to go to school? Like, what do they teach you at school that you already do not know? Because I think everyone knows how to cook rice, everyone knows how to do eggs, everyone knows how to do chicken. Like, what's, what's, like what makes you extraordinary from a normal home cook? Uh, what makes me extraordinary mm. is the experience. Mm. The experience, you know, you learn about uh, you learn a lot about the different cuisines. Mm. You know, mm. you don't only learn about. You'll be exp you'll be surprised. They didn't even cook pap at school. Oh. They didn't teach us how to cook pap. It's what we already know. Mm. What they were teaching us, they were training us for the basics that you need when you when you get into the kitchen. Mm. You know, you need you need cutting skills mm. you need to know which cutting balls to use mm. when working with what but a cutting board is a cutting board no, a cutting board is not a cutting board <laughs> there is a green cutting board yeah. it's for vegetables and fruits yeah. there is a brown cutting board it's for cooked meat mm. and the red cutting board is for the raw meat but now what if you use the green one for meat like, is the meat going to taste different? No, but like, this is where contamination comes in. Oh. Food contamination. 
by using different colors of mm. birds, mm. we are trying to prevent contamination. Mm. Yeah, mm. We're not mm. trying to contaminate food. Mm. Yes. Mm. 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 So um, during um, the whole um, process of you being in the culinary school, is there ever a specific place that you said this is where I want to see myself? Yeah. Mm. Uh, what I wanted to do, mm. there is a profile that I made back in my first year. Mm. The, my main reason of being here, I want to learn about food, I guess. Mm. So, in my process of learning with food, I also want to fight poverty mm. in Africa, mm. you know. But as time went by, I realized that fighting poverty in Africa is not gonna, it doesn't only take feeding people with food. True. You need to fight employment, mm. you know. Mm. So mm. yeah, and mm. that's when I realized that like, I need to create jobs, mm. I wanna create jobs. Mm. So we can at least decrease mm. the, what's this? Unemployment rate. Unemployment rate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So now I want to know, and I think also um, it's a general question that people have at the back of their minds because as I've said that um, within African communities, when you speak about culinary, you speak about um, a duty that happens in the kitchen, right? So with what you're doing um, as a qualified chef um, and you open your own establishment, right? Is it enough to sustain you for the rest of your life? Or you must do a food and then have another business, um, like another side hustle, or the money is enough. I think, let me just say, does it pay? Yeah. Uh, the hospitality industry as a whole, mm. it makes a lot of money, mm. but there are going to be challenges. Mm. This mm. is where the challenges mm. come. There will, I see no problem with establishments growing mm. the establishments are gonna grow there mm. are gonna be people that are gonna start new establishments mm. and then mm. there's gonna be competition mm. there's gonna be competition that's where you need to see yourself out that now I need to try other things other side hustles oh. you know, because the money is not gonna be enough there's gonna be more competition mm. yeah mm. and then Mm. Yeah, there's going to be more competition, so you have to see yourself out that you have to make money in other ways. Mm. You don't have, just have to depend on your virtue. Mm. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. So, um, you know, I'm very much big on role models, right? Yeah. That it's very much important to always have that specific person or people that you always look up to, especially in your journey, that each and every single time you feel like giving up, you look at that specific individual and say, so, you know what, just because they did it, I know that I can. Um, in your industry, especially now in South Africa, let's make it local, who is that one chef in South Africa that you look up to and say, you know what, it's possible? Yeah, it's Chef Tips. Mm. Uh, Tibel mm. Yeah, that's him. He inspires me so much. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So mm. sometimes when I feel like giving up, I look up to him and then another one is, uh, Chef Kabza, mm. yeah, Chef Kabza, they are based in Pretoria, mm. yeah, mm. they are doing so well, mm. yeah. yeah, and you, you say now they're based in Pretoria, yeah. right, so do you think that the hospitality industry in Free State is where it's supposed to be, or there's still a lot of work to be done, um, and would you say you would be based in the Free State um, for the rest of your life, or you also want to go to Pretoria, Joburg, Cape Town? I don't want to go to Pretoria, I don't want to go out of the free state. Mm. I want to be part of the growth of hospitality industry in the free state. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's why mm. I don't want to... Mm. Uh, mm. Because I'm still new in the industry, mm. what I want to do yeah, is maybe go to Pretoria or Cape Town mm. for experience, mm. just for experience and mm. then bring it back to free state bring it back home. you know so we still have a long way to go in free mm. state mm. yeah mm. but and we have some good establishments in, in the free state true. but they still have a 
long way to go. Mm. Yeah. And it's, I think it's very much profound that you say that you want to be part of the change that is going to happen yeah, and establishing a lot of things. And I think it's possible. Yeah. Um, if we as free state artists, people in, in, in different industries, keep the talent home, because I believe that, that what makes us different from other um, provinces or other big cities is that they have resource, but we have talent. With the talent that we have, I think it's very much important for us to create our own resources. And the moment we have resource and talent, we're going to outweigh them. You yeah. see, so I, I think it's something that can be done. So now, COVID-19 comes, right? 2020, January, we all had our own ambitions, we all had our own dreams that this is what uh, we want to achieve. And then COVID-19 says, no. But with you, it said yes. Yeah, with Please just take us through that journey. Okay. Mm. So, in the beginning of lockdown, mm. I was still in Bloemfontein. Mm. I was working somewhere. Mm. So, due to how they were treating us there, mm. I had to leave. Mm. Because it was too much for me. I was... I was close to being depressed. Mm. Yeah, so I had to leave. So that's when I decided to, let, you know what, let me go home. Mm. Because in February, I had this idea of starting a donut business in Bloemfontein, mm. you know. But I didn't have resources. Mm. I was working at the time. I was not going to have time to distribute my things. So when I got home, Oh, while I was still in Bloemfontein, I bought some boxes, mm. donut boxes. I used to do some there uh, where I stayed. I used to do some donuts there. And then when lockdown hit, I, I had those boxes. Mm. So when I left Bloemfontein to mm. I took those, I took some few boxes mm. and told myself, okay, let me try this. Let mm. me go home and test the market there and see if I will sell the, these donuts, mm. you know. So I, I went to Kronstadt. I went for a weekend. It was for a weekend when I went there. So I went there and make sure I get Yeah, no. I postpone get ready. I will do it. Mm. So, can see the time you can happen. It was for good. Mm. Mm. As I put in, I sent a resignation letter. For, hey, not longer coming back. Mm. So, I started. The, so this is how I exactly started. It was my mom's birthday. Mm. So, I. Baked her a cake on her birthday. It was on the 16th. Mm. And then, with the buttercream that was left, mm. butter icing that was left, mm. I decided, I thought, oh, let me make some donuts, mm. you know. I made some donuts, posted them on my social platforms. Mm. And then, people started asking, are you selling? Mm. Are you selling? Are you mm. selling? Mm. And then I was like, no, but let me see what I can do, mm. you know, because mm. if it was not for my friends, I will still be saying, hey, I want to sell wanna donuts, start, I want to start, start, I want to start, start, you know. Yeah. So yeah. my friends pushed me mm. from Emina. Mm. If you need help, we will come and help you. Mm. About six of them, mm. they came through. Mm. They came through. I woke up early. On the 20th, I woke up early and then I made the dough. By half past seven, we didn't have enough toppings. Mm. So I had to rush to check us before I knew that there was a baking supplier, mm. baker's supplier in Kronstadt. Mm. So I went to check us, bought some baker's cho cooking chocolate to top donuts. So, yeah, I showed them how we're going to work right there and then on the 20th. You know, they didn't get enough time for me to get training. Mm. So we did it on the day of sales, mm. you know. Mm. So we pushed. 
I showed them so the butter cream. This is how you're gonna do the butter cream. This are so they were a bit annoying. Mm. They were slow. <laughs> so I had to hey. I got angry, mm. so mm. I had to shout at them. Mm. Some mm. of them mm. didn't like it. Mm. They didn't come back the next day. <laughs> Those Bapilo mm. they came back. They came back. You know, they came back. Sorry from Twitter, it's in my band. I apologize to Sorry from Twitter, it's in my band, guys. In Twitter, it's a halamunana. If Rasas is a shop, there are going to be a lot of arguments. Roto Shoutana, Gamoka Kishin, you know. Yeah, so even my parents sat me down. That's not how you're gonna work with your people. You're not gonna just shout out of the blue. Mm. I'm like, no, I didn't shout out of the blue. Mm. They were slow. Mm. You know, I had to. Yeah, you know, I think you're mentioning something very important that I think I also want to know that during culinary school, do they teach you only cooking? Or they teach you things like interpersonal communication, um, speaking with people. Because I believe that although sometimes you are in the kitchen, um, there's a lot of presentations that you do. And sometimes you have to serve customers. Yeah. So you have to know how to speak to people. Yeah. Do they also teach you guys that? Yeah, they teach you that. There's in the, it was in the first module mm. of first year mm. that every time you speak to a customer, you have to have you must have a smile on your face mm. no matter how you're feeling mm. but as soon as you enter the kitchen as soon as you go in in the front line mm. you have to have you gotta have a smile on your face mm. you know so that's yeah right. we are taught that, that yeah. you gotta smile mm. so so now back, back to, in, okay yeah. back in the kitchen mm. there is no smiling we work oh we work because if you smile they're gonna take advantage. They're gonna be sissies <laughs> in the kitchen. Yeah. You don't want that in the kitchen. Yeah. Mm. So what was I? Yeah. So you're discussing the whole um donut journey. Donut now. journey. Yeah. So yeah. after your friends left. In after the, my friends left, I was go? left with three friends. Mm. It was me, my brother, my three friends. My aunt was mm. on leave because of the yeah, COVID. COVID yeah. So and my cousin. Mm. So my aunt was helping with the dishes, with the cleaning. Uh, my other three friends were topping. Mm. Yeah, they were helping with topping. And what was I doing? You're just being the boss. I was, yeah, I You're was being, the, I was being the, executive, <laughs> the, the executive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the business, was doing great the mm. business is still doing great mm. yeah but mm. we came across some challenges because mm. people had to order the day before you know mm. and i realized that it's not every day uh the people want something when they see it mm. though like things like donuts you want it when they see it or True. when they pop up in your mind or True. when you see them on the timeline so <laughs> i had to hurry get in okay so i slept on that idea mm. what uh, what am i going to do hurry? you know mm. so i slept on it for a bit i kept running that way like you have to order the day before mm. you know so it was working it was working until the, until we got to level four mm. when we got to level four i think when was the alcohol level three level three yeah yeah, yeah. Level, between was, level four and level three yeah, i can't remember correctly the, yeah and then when the alcohol was mm. that's when I faced my second challenge. Mm. Mm. The, the orders started becoming slow now. Mm, because of because, course, you know, there's a higher demand for yeah, something else. You know, so I felt like giving up, but yeah. I was like, mm. no, I'm not going to give up because mm. of alcohol, mm. you know. I think um, let's just quickly um, dive into that aspect that you know many times when we are in this journey right yeah. um, of trying to become what we are meant to be um, the behind the scenes people do not know that there comes a point whereby you just say you know what 
I think I should just shove this idea and just go back to sleep and just give up. Yeah. Right? At that specific moment, what is that one thing that you say that it keeps you going? Because I think this is not your first time where in anything you wanted to give up. Yeah. Right? What is that one thing that just pushes you back? That you know what? I don't want to give up. Um... One thing that always pushes me from giving up is I don't I, I have the reason why I started the donuts business is because there is a bigger mm. picture mm. camera donuts. The donuts the donuts business is just a is start. to start mm. and build me mm. a capital mm. to start mm. what I want to achieve mm. you know mm. so mm. I'm not gonna stop you know come hell or high orders mm. I'm gonna go mm. you know so in level three that's when we face the challenges there yeah? so I was like no you know what I'm not gonna give up I have a restaurant waiting for me mm. you know mm. 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 I have powerful people waiting for me. Mm. I have families in the future that I have to feed. Sure. You know. So I didn't stop. That's when we decided because I'm not working alone. Mm. You know, we are a team. You know, I always allow everyone in the kitchen to come up with ideas. Mm. You know, you'll be surprised that there is a flavor that was developed by my aunt. My aunt who helped us wash the dishes, mm, you know. Mm, mm. While she was clearing there, she mixed the flavors. Mm. She mixed the flavors and then she dipped the donut in there and then it came out, it made a marble mm. yeah, yeah. thing yeah, 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 on yeah. top. And then we made we put it on the menu mm. and then we said, this is what we're gonna name the donuts. It's mm. gonna be marble. Mm. You know? So we work with everyone. You have new ideas, you come up with them, we see how we're gonna implement them, you know. So I work with everyone, even my parents. When we started they were they were like soldiers in the kitchen. They were they were controlling what? is it product? Yeah, they were product controllers. Oh. Yeah. If they didn't like the shape mm. of the donut, mm. they will put it oh. aside. Like that is not going. Basically, quality control. Quality, yeah, quality yeah. control. That's Seeing the, that everything yeah. is, is, you know, ooh. yeah. So Good. that's what. Even when they went back to work, mm. my brother was the quality controller. Mm. So this is not going there. Mm. You take his taste in there. Mm. No, mm. this is not fine. Mm. That's where. That's the. Uh, that's this is the other challenge now we are throwing away the product that's a loss you know yeah so <clears throat> i had to make sure that i i don't let my friends mm. my other teammates i don't let them do the toppings anymore you know so i will do the toppings you deal with the you will top them mm. but i will make them mm. you know so so basically um everything here yeah, when you look at it it's a formally like it's a it's an informally run business yeah with everything that you need yes. there are quality controllers um one there thing is. there's a loss there's a boss that yeah. people it's it, it's actually running but with this now it's with your friends and your family it's with my friends and family. i think it it, it 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 also emphasizes on the point that if you have a dream and your dream is supposed to work those that are around you are the first people to support you. If yeah. you have a very good support structure, those around you are the ones to support you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now I'm um, uh, moving forward now. I'm um, in the future. Where do you see the whole um, donut business? Because you mentioned the, the issue of the bigger picture, yeah. which I think is also something very important that people must learn yeah. that every time you feel like giving up, you will always paint the picture of the future that you desire so that every time you feel like giving up this step, you look at the bigger picture that this is where I want to be. Yeah. So it's very much important for me to always look at there, right? So for you, um, how is the bigger picture looking like? Before we get to the bigger picture, yeah. our main bigger picture now mm. is to be 
is to distribute our donuts mm. around free state mm. you know like every morning you get to your engine you can get your donuts there mm. and then I want to be I want 107 donuts to be I want you when you get to the malls in the next two years or three years I want to when you get to Mimosa when you get to waterfront maybe you're gonna get 107 donuts they are there mm. you know you get 107 to, is the name of the yeah donut. 107 is the name of the donuts and then you get to campus mm. you get to Takanem Bridge maybe mm. you get 107 donuts mm. they are there you know mm. yeah mm. that's mm. the picture mm. now mm. we want to get into the campuses malls you know shopping complexes where we can get mm. you know mm. and it is possible we're mm. gonna do it it's very much possible yeah. And I think with, 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 with the amount of work that you're putting in, um, success is inevitable. Success is going to come. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now, um, what other things are you are you busy with except 107? Um, what other ventures have you been um, doing recently? No, I, I'm just focusing on focusing, 107 right, right now. Focusing on yeah. 107. All right. And then if people um, want to get hold of you, social media platforms, where can they get you? Uh, we have a Facebook page, mm. it's 107, just 107, mm. and then they can follow me on Twitter, it's at letsejo underscore t, mm. and then on Facebook, my private uh, account is botlali mm. and then on Instagram, it's letsejo tlale, mm. letsejo underscore tlale, mm. yeah. Mm. Yeah. And just a quick insight, we both have the same name, because our names are Botlali. You see, oh. Botlali are very Botlali by nature. <laughs> Botlali are a Botlali, just generally. We, yeah. we don't need to justify it, you sure, can see sure. for yourself, right? So now, um, what is that one advice that you would give to um, a high school learner saying, you know what, I think I love cooking, um, I know how to put meals together at home, I think this is what I want, I want to pursue, right? What is that one advice you would give to them? Um, I will advise them to have a school, mm. you know, mm. and then if Moto, what's it about? Hey, I can cook, mm. you know, scaffold mm. you know, if you want to cook, go to school, get some training, you know, and get experience so you can be more and more good mm. you can be best at cooking mm. you know yeah so they they shouldn't even give up they shouldn't even think about other stuff when they are applying mm. just apply for your hospitality management course apply for your <clears throat> what is it apply for your bursaries mm. you know mm. yeah are there a lot and of bursaries um, in the hospitality industry no so and apparently it's very expensive to it's study very expensive mm. so unfortunately now nah, i wasn't haka mm. of mana bazaar because i went to a private institution yeah so they couldn't find me you know mm. so that was the other challenge but we always make things work yeah right? we always yeah. make things work so and then the other advice i would give to hustlers out there mm. like don't ever have the mentality to give up mm. you must never you sure. know because i have a funny story i didn't finish my level two to level one well the own level one mm. yeah mm. i didn't finish the whole story mm. can i yes, yes okay. yeah so level two majora bullets i guess mm. so business is running slow now mm. you know i i have to send back my friend like guys mm. you are working on your little business mm. you know so i had to send them back and then that was that was on level two mm. so we get to level one this is when I implement the idea of it. We are not gonna wait for others to come in. Mm. We want sales now. Mm. You know, if you want sales, you go get the sales. You know, so what we did on the very first day of level one, 
the, it was on a Sunday when I made this decision because it was a decision that was made back then, you know, that we we have to go out to the streets to sell, you know. We can't always be here waiting for orders, True. you know. True. Because like I said, Motobatla donate high. The moment they see it, yeah, yes, you know? yes. So I had to I had to buy packets this size mm. and then in the morning we wake up, we made the donuts because our donuts are made freshly every single day, mm. you know. The donuts that are left, I give them to small, to these little children outside, you know, that are playing. So I give them to them. So we go sell to the streets. We go sell to the streets. When was it? Last week, we, mm. I came back. We went to the street six months ago. So, sure. and then the funny part is, Hansekirikis, mm. but when they don't want to get inside the outlets that are selling food. Mm. So, like, guys, we want sales. Mm. If you don't want to go in there, give me a display box. Mm. I'm going to go inside there. Mm. I'm going to sell my product to these people, mm. you know. Because the dream is yours at the, the end dream of the day. The dream is mine the, at the end of the day. Mm. But they also support me. They ended up doing it as well. Mm. Where you get to where they sell food, where they sell donuts. You mm. get in. You get in, the you get in there. Donut. You sell your donuts. Shoo! You know, yeah. Mm, yeah, mm, so mm, that's mm. how we're operating now. We still take orders. Mm. Yeah, we still take orders. When you make your order, we make your order. But after we finish with your order, we mm. deliver it. And then we are in the streets again. Mm. Yeah. I think that's very powerful that many a times um, we should never be dependent on other people yeah. to make our dreams work, right? And the moment they contribute to our dream, it's fine. But there should never be a determinant that if this person doesn't support me, I'm stopping everything. Yeah. yeah so now finally, um, the last question that I always ask guests on the show is that, um, God forbid you were to die today. What is that one thing that you want to be remembered for or as? I want to be remembered with my food. Mm. Yeah, my food. I want when when people eat my food, I want them to remember me with my food. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Mm, mm, because mm. I put, I put my heart in, in the plate in mm. every plate that I may, I cook. Mm. I put my heart in it. You see, and my my work is art. Mm. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And we all know that art heals. So the moment it is put, healing yeah. is, 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 is inevitable. And that is how we wrap up another con um, conversation here on the Black Couch on Behind the Scenes. Thank you so much thank you, um, thank for you. coming. Um, we wish you the best um, for the end of those ahead. And we know that definitely the best is yet to come. Yeah, and if you want to be part of a Behind the Scenes, um, drop us an email at um, k2kcmedia at gmail.com. Alternatively, email motivationbeyondwords at gmail.com. Don't forget to sanitize. Keep on wearing your face masks. Adhere to social distancing rules because COVID-19 is still real and COVID-19 is still taking lives. Stay safe. And until next time, remember that live light, love light, love your light, and let love lead. Remember that before you die, Make sure you live. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.